You are an immigrant. I am an immigrant. Everyone you know in the U.S. are all immigrants. They all came here through their grandparents. I came here through my grandparents, my parents and my grandparents, and so did you. Let me explain more about this. So when we look at countries around the world, that is Germany, Japan, China, even Russia, they have family trees that stretch back thousands of years. They can trace their family tree back dozens, hundreds of levels. Here in the United States, we can only trace our family trees back 247 years. We are a young country. And because we are a young country, we have certain things that we need to keep in mind. The daughters of the American Revolution trace us back. They trace women's lineage, that is their family tree, back to people who were involved in the revolution, in the U.S. Revolution. Again, that's approximately 247 years ago. So it's not a long family tree that they trace back, but it is an important one. Now, when we, if we look at ourselves as immigrants, instead of looking at them as illegal immigrants, we start to look at them as immigrants. So let's take that for a moment and let's talk about uh, jobs in the U.S. Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs has a uh, ongoing ambition to have us look at the 10 million jobs that go unfilled every year and those 10 million jobs are skilled tradesmen. And one of the reasons that they go unfilled is that the American psyche is meant for our children to go to college and that there's something wrong with being in the trades. Uh, I am probably going to do a whole other video on that, but the you need to understand that we as Americans need these trades filled. If you ever want your bathroom redone, you ever want your house renovated, you need skilled craftsmen to do so. And it's not taking away U.S. jobs. These are jobs that could be filled by U.S. citizens that are not being filled. We need immigrants to do these jobs. So when we talk about uh, these immigrants and filling the jobs, what that, the, the reason that immigrants are being seen as as a bad thing is because of political motivations to make them part of a political conversation. And what we need are facts that surround political, surround the, the, the migrant solution and what we should do about it in order to make uh, those facts guide what we will what we'll do in the in the future. So here are some facts that are from a national, from the national and state law enforcement statistics. Undocumented immigrants. There are lower offending rates for undocumented immigrants than compared to U.S. born citizens. Now these are facts and statistics that are generated by national and state law enforcement. Uh, for drug offenses, they're less than half as likely to be arrested and for drug offenses compared to natural born US citizens. So criminal non-citizens, we have arrests in fiscal year 2023, there were 15,267 arrests of criminal non-citizens by the US Border Patrol. That is not the millions of illegal, illegal immigrants that are, are raping and pillaging the US according to certain political uh, conversations. The facts are that, you know, the common convictions for those immigrants, those undocked, those criminal non-citizens, were dri drive dr driving under the influence, illegal possession and trafficking, and illegal entry or re-entry. Now let's compare that to U.S. born citizen rates of violent crime. 
In 2022, the violent crime rate was 380.7 incidences per 100,000 people. Now that again, whether you're a U.S. citizen or you're a, a, an immigrant or an illegal immigrant or an undocumented immigrant, that is not the millions of, of instance, instances of criminal acts by migrants. Let's be clear here. That is not the case. And, you know, so when we look at the comparative analysis of this, immigrants have a much lower or a similar or much lower likelihood of incarceration compared to native-born Americans. And the conviction rates, now, one of these I think is very telling, right? So the the conviction rate in Texas, their undocumented immigrants were found to be 47% less likely to be convicted of a crime in 2017 compared to native-born citizens. So overall, research and, and statistics provided by states such as Florida, such as Texas, such as California, big states, New York, all indicate that uh, both documented and undocumented immigrants, they tend to be have a lower crime rate than natural born US citizens. Now I wanna to talk to you about a plan for fixing the immigration system. And I believe that these are some ideas that I personally think are, are good and are worthwhile in, in the political landscape to talk about. So the first one is documented immigrants will be selected for their skills. We want immigrants to come in. We, we don't want them to be illegal. We want them to come across the border and to be documented for their skills and selected for the skill sets that they will bring to the U.S. to make them a qualified citizen and do what we need to do what our citizens are not doing. So there are 10 million, remember there are 10 million jobs going unfilled every year. So we need to have a skill sets brought into the United States. Number two, immigrants need to register and be captured on a 3D image. Now, I know this is very technical and kind of very specific, but I think it's important that we understand who these documented immigrants are that we're allowing into the United States, and then we can track them and report on them and make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. We want them in the United States, but we want to track them. And any that report, any, any that uh, don't report in every 30 days will have an automatic warrant issued. And keep in mind with the, with the technology that we have today, Reporting in could be done at every post office, and there could be a kiosk where their 3D image reads their facial uh, expression, their face, and reports them in. They validate their address. It takes 15 seconds for them to do, and they're, they're done. Right? And anybody that doesn't do that has an automatic warrant issued for them. So number five on the on my list is a private skip trace or bounty hunter that these companies are paid to capture these users these these people these documented immigrants that come in to do job for jobs for us and those bounty hunters will be paid by the government to pick up these people they do a great job of it they're paid to do it that's how they make their money so we want we want to encourage uh, the ability to have these people who don't report in taken you know, off the streets and, uh, and put out, and then they will not be allowed back in. And one of the things that doing the 3D image of them allows us to do is to search through crowds for known uh, reoffenders. So when a crowd of a thousand people come to the border, we scan them, and if we, we pick out the ones that have been put out before and they will not be let back in, and that's one way to, to, uh, to do this. So we have, you know, we have the stick. Now, what about the carrot? So 
we want tax incentives to be set up for companies in select in these selected skill sets that apprentice and employ documented migrants encouraging companies to pick up these users these these people and give them jobs because when a documented migrant has a job they are paying taxes which will help pay the cost of all of these things that we want to do so maybe these tax incentives will pay for themselves over time i also think the border patrol probably should be increased by a factor of at least two so if if you know if that's the border patrol is a very important aspect in all of this and they need to have the support of of the government finally i think that a path to citizenship should be allowed let's say after five years of no criminal acts and steady employment in the skill set that they say that they were able to do when they came into the country and they were hired in to do it. Right? So if we look at these, these objectives, if we look at these possibilities of how to reimagine re the migrant, the immigration system, we can, it can be a win-win situation for us as citizens, it can be a win-win situation for the government in that we will have many, many jobs being filled that are not being filled today. And it will be a win-win situation for the migrants coming in as they will understand what they need to do to get into the United States and be documented and have a path to citizenship. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of pushback on this and second guessing and and talk about it's it's not a good idea right but it is a good idea these are good ideas and there are lots of other good ideas and we as americans need to quit referring to immigrants legal documented undocumented as them because they because we are them they are us all of us are immigrants to you to you know to get back to my preface on this all of us are immigrants and we need to understand that and remember that and adhere to some standards when it comes to talking about this that don't demonize other people thank you for watching and i hope you're going to stick around to see other videos if you liked what I had to say, please uh, subscribe and comment. Uh, comment in a in a in a reasonable way, right? Comment, give your give your ideas. Talk about this. I want the community to talk about how things can be done in a better way. So thank you for watching. Come back again.